right, so we're going to do one more video on differentiability. Um, you can you can view this one as optional if you like, uh, but there's some there's some cool stuff that that happens if you if you think sort of about well what happens in uh, in general if I'm, if I want to do a sort of a general function right say f going from R n to Rm, right? I, I'm being lazy about domain here. Um, now, so so differentiability is 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 you know very closely related to this this existence of a best linear approximation, right? So having linear approximations is all all about what it means to be differentiable. And well, so what what does a linear function look like um, in this very general situation, especially when you have sort of a higher dimensional target space, right? Um, well, you know, we, we have an answer coming from, from linear algebra, right? I mean, if you've gotten to this course, you've had to take at one course in linear, at least one course in linear algebra. And so you might have talked a little bit about, about linear functions in that course. Um, now, one sort of terminology issue that, that I want to bring out, uh, which is that, you know, in, uh, in calculus, when we talk about a function being linear, right, we, we think about something whose graph is a line. So we think about, you know, something like that as being a linear function because you graph it and you get a line. Um, but in, uh, in algebra, in particular in linear algebra, there's a very different notion of what it means for a function to be to be linear, right? You have this requirement that you know t of, of x plus y should be t of x um, plus t of y, and t of you know think of these as vectors, right? So if you had a, a scalar multiple in there, k times x, you can pull out the scalar. And, and in particular, one consequence if you set k equal to zero. Uh, in this property is that t has to take the zero vector, right? So this would be the, the sort of, you know, n-dimensional zero vector to the m-dimensional zero vector, right? So t of zero has to be zero. These are, these are conditions that you have. Um, and, of course, that doesn't happen for something like this unless b equals zero, right? Um, f of zero is going to be b. So if you want this to be an honest linear function in the algebra setting, um, you need b to be zero. You only look at lines through the origin. Uh, so one of the ways you get around it is you use this word affine um, to, to refer to something which is, is sort of like, you know, it, it's linear plus sort of a translation, right? So you're, you're, you're taking a linear map like this and then you're adding something on, right? So uh, a general sort of, if you like, affine transformation, right? So an affine transformation um, and, and maybe we'll stick with, uh, uh, let's call it L, right? We like to call these things L. So going from R n to r m, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like l of x equals b plus t of x, where this t is, is linear. And, and one of the ways that you can, of course, uh, if you've chosen a coordinate system, if you've chosen a basis, then you can always write your linear map as a matrix A times, times your vector. Oops, sorry, this, this should be a plus, right? So B plus A times X, right? Or AX plus B, if you like. Uh, so this is sort of the general, you know, this MX plus B in one variable becomes like an AX plus B in, in several variables where this matrix A, uh, it does something like slope. So it, it acts something like slope, right? It's, it's this um, linear transformation. Um, so this, so here we're thinking of A as, so it's gonna be an M by N 
uh, matrix. And x here, well, the trouble is, right, we, we kind of like to write, um, we like to think of x as, well, common calculus notation is use these angle brackets. But or maybe here we should write this as, um, this should become, you know, x as a, a column vector, x1 down to xn, right? And, and that's just so that the matrix product is, is, is defined. Um, if, you, if you like to use this sort of angle bracket notation, um, maybe you could write something like a dot, kind of, you know, think about some extension of the dot product uh, to the case where you're dealing with matrices to, you know, remind yourself that, you know, when you're doing this multiplication, you're thinking of your x as a column vector. Um, I, I'm not sure what the right way to, to kind of uh, accommodate the different notations is. Maybe we should just always write our vectors as column vectors, but uh, things get cluttered if you do it that way. Okay, so, so one of the ways to think about, well, what should, it, what should it mean for a function to be differentiable? Um, so maybe saying that, you know, so saying that uh, f is differentiable at some point in, so we'll use vector notation here, right? So a here is, is representing, you know, say a point a1 to, to a n. Uh, or, or column vector, however you want to think of it. So, so what, what should it mean for, for f to be differentiable? Um, well, it should mean that there should be a sort of, if you like, um, a best um, linear approximation and, and hereby by linear, right, again, this is, this is where we, we probably really mean affine, right? So that, that should look like something like this, right? So it should mean that, so f at x should be approximated by something that looks like b plus a times x, where a is a matrix, and... Um, so B is going to be, so if we think of these, so this is going to be an, an M by 1 column vector. This is M by N. This is N by 1. So the sizes all, all work out, right? Um, so certainly, and, and actually, we probably want to do one more thing here. Um, well, you know, there's a number of things you can do to play around with this, but... One thing you definitely want is, is you want things to agree at zero, right? Or, or, or at A, right? So you want F of A to be, yeah. So anyway, um, let me just kind of skip this part because this kind of tends to, you can play around with it, but you can rewrite it like this, which should look familiar from the one variable case, right? In the one variable setting, uh, the only difference is that this a here, that's that's usually where the derivative comes in. So so is this is this some analog of of f prime here? What is it exactly, right? Uh, and it is. This is the derivative, but the derivative is no longer a number or a function. The derivative is is a matrix, and and so so differentiability means that you know, we should be able to do something like this. The limit, as say the vector h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a. So again, you put x equal to a plus h and you get something that looks like this, minus a times, um, times h. Um, and again, this is this is a matrix product, so maybe I should maybe I should write it as such. So a times times h. Okay, a h and uh, all divided by the norm of h. And you know, 
Remember that this is a vector up top, so you might kind of take the norm of that as well. And you ask that that limit be zero. Okay. Um, so so this is this is what it would mean to be differentiable um, in general for a general function um, R n to R m. And um, and what is this matrix A? Well. A is going to look like this. And the way you figure this out, it's just like we did in the last video where we realized that if you started with a, with a, a linear approximation, so some tangent plane or some plane approximation, and you left the coefficients undetermined, uh, by, by taking the derivative along different paths, you can, you can realize that those, those coefficients have to be partial derivatives you can do the same thing here, right? So you can let h go to zero, where maybe you set, you know, the first coordinate is going to zero and the, all the other ones are, are already zero, or you do, the, you know, so you choose one axis at a time. So you approach along the different coordinate axes, n of them, right, in this case, and, and you see what you get. And, and so if I, so I guess if, if f goes to rm, then I should really think of f as like, you know, a vector, like f1 up to, Fm, it has some components. And, and so if you work this out, you find that what this A looks like is it's going to be the partial derivative of the first component with respect to the first variable, um, all the way across to the partial of the first component with respect to the last variable, and then down to the last component, first variable, and last variable, right? So you get this, uh, this m by n matrix of all the partial derivatives. Um, this is, uh, there are a lot of different notations that you'll see for this. I'll use this one, df at a. Uh, these should all be evaluated at a, but I'm, I'm too lazy to write that down. Um, this is sometimes referred to as the Jacobian matrix of your function, right? So, so this thing, with a bit of work, you can, you can check that this matrix does fall out. It's the unique matrix that will make this limit zero if your function is differentiable, right? So in particular, if all, if all of the first order partial derivatives for all of the components of your function are continuous, your function will be differentiable, and, and this, uh, this matrix A, which gives you this approximation, it's always going to be this matrix of partial derivatives. Um, and let me just mention that uh, in closing, in the, in the special case where M is equal to one, right? So if M is equal to one, um, then you just have a real valued function. And in that case, and let me just kind of box this in. If M is equal to one, this derivative is, is going to look like, well, it's going to be, a matrix with only one row. So it's just going to look like df dx1 uh, over to df dxn. Okay? And now this is not quite a vector. If we're thinking of our vectors as being column vectors, well, this is a row. So it's, it's, not, it's not quite you know, a vector in this sense. Um, uh, the right answer is it's a dual vector, but I don't think we want to go there. Um, even if you've done the second course in linear algebra, you probably didn't talk too much about dual spaces, um, but there's some fun you can have with that. Um, but there is a corresponding column vector that matches this, and it's called the gradient. So we have this notation. Uh, this uh, upside-down triangle is called nabla. I forget what like, anyway, where that comes from, but... Um, so there's this corresponding vector, right? df dx1 down to df dxn, okay? Uh, and this is called the gradient vector. So in some sense, for real valued functions, for in, in some sense, this gradient is the derivative, right? It's made up of all the partial derivatives. Uh, and, and in some sense, this gradient tells you everything you need to know about differentiability of your function. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll get into that shortly. We'll see how you can use the gradient to calculate not just your partial derivatives, which are done along the coordinate axes, but also directional derivatives, where you 
um, you look at derivatives in directions that are not parallel to the coordinate axes. Um, but that will be a topic for another video.